afternoon, everyone. Welcome to SkillsFuture Festival X Smart Nation 2022 webinar series organized by SkillsFuture Singapore and Smart Nation Office. Today's webinar entitled Enhance Your Productivity with Artificial Intelligence Tools is organized in partnership with Republic Polytechnic. I'm Phoebe and I'll be your host for this session. So today we'll be learning about leveraging AI productivity hacks to help you work smarter and faster, followed by a Q&A to wrap up the session. During the webinar, please feel free to type in your questions using the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen. The speaker will address them accordingly. Without further ado, let's welcome Seo Kiwi, Assistant Director, School of Infocom of Republic Polytechnic. Kiwi, please. Thanks, uh, Phoebe. Thanks, Phoebe. Um, yeah, let me just share my screen. Huh? Okay. So sorry about this. Yep. I hope you guys are seeing my screen. And then the uh, if uh you, if you wait a while, you should hear some music playing in the background. Huh? Yep. So I'm very excited uh, to be here today to share with you guys uh, some of the little tools that uh, I use you know, or during my course of work, you know, doing research, uh, uh, come across such little tools which I think uh, may be very useful. So I would like to take this opportunity to share with everyone. Uh, maybe just a quick intro. Um, yeah, so my name is Kiwei. So I'm from, uh, as Phoebe uh, mentioned earlier, I'm from Republic Poly. Uh, I'm an engineer by training, uh, by profession. I am actually uh, fundamentally a, a lecturer uh, in the polytechnic. Uh, but by and large, I, I, me and my team of people, we do a lot of uh, industry uh, outreach, you know, by that meaning, we actually talk to industry partners uh, to know what they need uh, uh, to make themselves more productive, you know, how do they apply technology in their course of work, and then we bring those requirements back to the poly, uh, and then we recraft it as a so-called uh, requirement, something that we use to teach our students, uh, so that we make sure that the students, when they go out, they are still employable, right? Okay, so uh, you have my contact information there. If anything, you know, feel free to reach out to me. I'll be happy to have a chat with you, right? Uh, a little bit about uh, what we are going to talk about as the synopsis for the uh, webinar, we want to talk a little bit about how can we use AI tool to increase your productivity uh, by writing better. You can quickly create content uh, with new ideas. How do we use AI tools to uh, quickly reply email, for example, uh, accelerate your reading or even clone your voice. Uh, so I'm going to show you some of these things uh, later. Uh. So you can see on the screen, I actually uh, put about eight, eight tools there. Uh, some you may have uh, seen before, some you may have not, uh, but I am not going to dive very deep into the respective tools, uh, but rather I want to make it a little bit more interactive. So I'll be uh, doing a live demo for some of these tools. In fact, all the tools, uh, I will do a very quick demo. I will let you know what it does, uh, what, it, what is the tool about, uh, how it works, and why you should use it. Uh, fundamentally, that's the three points I want to drive across for every tool. Uh, a couple of them are spend a little bit more time because there are a little bit more uh, functionality that we can demonstrate, right? Whereas the other are very simple, straightforward. So we will not go too deep into it. If you have, if you have time or if you're interested in those tools, feel free to browse and do your deeper research. Uh. Okay, uh, before we start, I want to do a warm up poll, you know, so that I can get to you, get to know you guys a little bit better. And then along the way, I may be able to adjust my content a little bit. Uh, as you can see, uh, I don't quite script uh, the, the material. I want to make it a little bit uh, more interactive. Right, shall we? Let's, uh, I think you should be familiar with Kahoot, right? Let's start with a little poll. Right, so you can use if you're on your laptop, you can go to go to Kahoot, right, and then use this pin uh, to join the poll. So we have about ninety one. We have about ninety one participants. Uh. Let's see. I think I should play as well. Uh.
Okay, we have 92. So I think we should expect a little bit more participation. Huh? Let's just wait for a few more seconds. Just a game now for the fun of it and also give me some information about the audience here. Okay. We will okay, the numbers still coming in. I think we can still afford to wait for a while more. Forty-six. Okay, technically we oh, okay, the numbers still coming in. Forty-eight, uh, forty-nine. Maybe we'll start once we reach fifty. Uh. Okay, let's start so that we don't keep the rest waiting. Uh. So first question. Where were you joining from? So you can drop your pin. Uh. I'm coming from all the way north. Okay, wow. Okay, we have uh, participants from all over Singapore. Nah. That's good. Uh, right, okay. Let's go to the next question. In one, two words, share an, I, share, share an area. You hope to use AI uh, to improve your productivity. It can be writing, you know, baking, whatever. Wow, okay, email writing, work writing, okay. Uh, planning, let me just take a quick look. Uh, mandating tasks, answer email, banking, learning, writing, work, speaking, automation, baking. Okay, uh, honestly, today, uh, those tools that I'm going to share with you, I think we really address the, the, the very big word in the middle, uh, writing. Uh. Uh, I won't be able to really uh, cover everything, but uh, later on, we'll share some resource on where you can get uh, more information about this. Uh. Good, good, good. These are good information to help us prepare uh, even the next series of talks. No? Right, third question, third and last. Describe your favorite AI tool, if any. Three submitted. Okay, let's take a look at the answer. Huh? Now, Grammarly. Okay, we see Grammarly, Python, Grammarly, Grammarly. Oops, in a minute. Grammarly, none, monday.com, robot, save time, speech recognition, auto, Grammarly. Oh, okay, so it looks like Grammarly is something very popular, and I think a lot of you are already kind of using it. Huh? Okay, just let me do a quick run Grammarly. Not that I know of oh, hand, handphone. Okay, good. Okay, good. Uh, thanks for the for participating uh, for being so participative. Uh. let's go on to the next part. Uh. Uh, Okay, just to bring everybody 
uh, up to speed. Uh, I see a lot of y'all don't may not really know what is AI. Uh. I'm going to just play a four or five minutes video so that everybody is in line, uh, in sync at least uh, to understand what is AI. Right? Hopefully, your there there is uh, actually sound. Uh, with this uh, clips. Uh. So if you don't hear or anything, just let me know through the chat. All right, I'm going to play the, the video now. Picture this, a machine that could organize your cupboard just as you like it, or okay. serve every member of the house a customized cup of coffee. Makes your day easier, doesn't it? These are the products of artificial intelligence. But why use the term artificial intelligence? Well, these machines are artificially incorporated with human-like intelligence to perform tasks as we do. This intelligence is built using complex algorithms and mathematical functions. But AI may not be as obvious as in the previous examples. In fact, AI is used in smartphones, cars, social media feeds, video games, banking, surveillance, and many other aspects of our daily life. The real question is, what does an AI do at its core? Here is a robot we built in our lab, which is now dropped onto a field. In spite of a variation in lighting, landscape, and dimensions of the field, the AI robot must perform as expected. This ability to react appropriately to a new situation is called generalized learning. The robot is now at a crossroad, one that is paved and the other rocky. The robot must determine which path to take based on the circumstances. This portrays the robot's reasoning ability. After a short stroll, the robot now encounters a stream that it cannot swim across. Using the plank provided as an input, the robot is able to cross this stream. So our robot uses the given input and finds the solution for a problem. This is problem solving. These three capabilities make the robot artificially intelligent. In short, AI provides machines with the capability to adapt, reason, and provide solutions. Well, now that we know what AI is, let's have a look at the two broad categories in AIs classified into. Weak AI, also called narrow AI, focuses solely on one task. For example, AlphaGo is a maestro of the game Go but you can't expect it to be even remotely good at chess. This makes AlphaGo a weak AI. You might say Alexa is definitely not a weak AI, since it can perform multiple tasks. Well, that's not really true. When you ask Alexa to play Despacito, it picks up the keywords play and Despacito and runs a program it is trained to. Alexa cannot respond to a question it isn't trained to answer. For instance, try asking Alexa the status of traffic from work to home. Alexa cannot provide you this information, as she is not trained to. And that brings us to our second category of AI, strong AI. Now, this is much like the robots that only exist in fiction as of now. Ultron from Avengers is an ideal example of a strong AI. That's because it's self-aware and eventually even develops emotions. This makes the AI's response unpredictable. You must be wondering, well, how is artificial intelligence different from machine learning and deep learning? We saw what AI is. Machine learning is a technique to achieve AI, and deep learning, in turn, is a subset of machine learning. Machine learning provides a machine with the capability to learn from data and experience through algorithms. Deep learning does this learning through ways inspired by the human brain. This means through deep learning, data and patterns can be better perceived. Ray Kurzweil, a well-known futurist, predicts that by the year 2045, we would have robots as smart as humans. This is called the point of singularity. Well, that's not all. In fact, Elon Musk predicts that the human mind and body will be enhanced by AI implants, which would make us partly cyborgs. So, here's a question for you. Which of the below AI projects don't exist yet? A. An AI robot with citizenship. B. A robot with a muscular skeletal system. C. AI that can read its owner's emotions. D. AI that develops emotions over time. Give it a thought and leave your answers in the comment section below.
three lucky winners will receive Amazon gift vouchers. Since the human brain is still a mystery, it's no surprise that AI too has a lot of unventured domains. For now, AI is built to work with humans and make our tasks easier. However, with the maturation of technology, we can only wait and watch what the future of AI holds for us. Well, that is artificial intelligence for you in short. Do not forget to leave your answer to the quiz in the comment section below. Also, like, share, and subscribe. Okay. Right. So, so I, I just wanted to give uh, everybody a little bit of quick background of what is artificial intelligence so that we are saying. Uh, so definitely we are not looking, we're not going to discuss all the technicality of AI and things like that, but really the last part, uh, how can we use AI at least at this stage of the development? How can we use all these little tools to help us uh, be a little bit more productive, uh, so to speak? Okay, since earlier on, subscribe to our video, not make un function A B a robot with a musk. Okay, I just want you to spend maybe two minutes uh, looking at this like not, not two minutes, sorry, too long. Uh, just five, six seconds. Take a look at this like. Okay. And I just want you to uh, probably not a guess like, because of this uh, session. Uh, basically, for me, I use a tool to create this artwork uh, so that I can have this illustration here as my main page, you know, rather than having to go and scout for image, uh, search for one, and then use it. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know why the music is not playing. I actually have a clip uh, behind, uh, which again, I created using an AI tool uh, to generate some background music. Lah. Okay, so let's get on with it. Uh, actually, we hopefully we, we can uh, really uh, go through very fast about all these eight tools. Uh, we don't have a lot of time. I do intend to keep you all here more than uh, say 15 minutes, right? So the very first tool is Write Better. Uh, in, in this case, uh, Grammarly.com, you know, for those who have not used this, you can basically go to this website or you can scan the QR code. Uh, uh, to go to this site quickly, can sign up an account and then you. I will just uh, show you uh, roughly how to use it in the later on stage. But I see in the audience, quite a lot of you actually know what this tool is about already or maybe already it's one of your favorite tools. Huh? Uh, so do bear with me. I just want to share this little uh, very productive tool with the audience here, right? So again, let's take a look at the introductory video. By the way, I am not associated with any of this company. Uh, it's just that in my course of work, in my course of research, I find that these are really tools that can help myself, help the colleagues, and also help the students uh, uh, be a little bit more productive. Uh. This is Tyler. Tyler, with Grammarly's help, is writing an email to his boss, Anita. Tyler sits just 15 feet away, though it can feel like the distance to Antarctica, approximately 47 million feet. Tyler desperately wants Anita to like him, but doesn't want to sound unsure of himself. He also wants to explain the incident at the elevator. But this probably isn't the email for that. It's an email asking to lead a team workshop because more collaboration would be really helpful, beneficial. But Tyler worries that Anita doesn't think he's confident, especially after the time he told her, I'm a suppository of information. And she gave him this look, since he clearly didn't know what a suppository was. This time, Tyler is determined to find the right words, the ones that will connect best with Anita, so that when Tyler sends his email, he receives a response in just 4 minutes and 12 seconds. That includes phrases like, I'm impressed, and such initiative. And the distance between Tyler and Anita stops feeling so far. Grammarly, helping you connect. Go to Grammarly.com to download. Okay, so that is Grammarly.com. Right, so what it is, as uh, the video we have alluded to, is basically a grammar checker, a premium checker, essay checker. You can even detect your tone, right, in the proper tone that you want, you know, a uh, style guide and a lot more. Lah. So I'm not going to go into the very detail. The app itself uh, is available in various versions. There's a free version, but there's limited functionality, right? Uh, whether you are a Chrome user, Mac user, 
or even your uh, Android or iOS users, uh, uh, iPhone users, there is a little version that can meet what you, uh, that can be used on the equipment that you are working on. Uh. So how does it work? Uh, in this case, Grammarly works by using the whole context, uh, not just looking at one word uh, to fix your sentence, right? Uh, it, it apparently is AI tool, uh, so there's an AI algorithm behind uh, that also uh, beyond spell checking, it actually uh, look at different ways uh, how other people write, you know, to improve your writing's cohesion and fluency and vocabulary, uh, obviously, right? Uh, why should you be using it? Because it gives you a quick and easy to understand uh, so-called lesson. Uh, I actually learned a lot, a lot uh, when I'm using Grammarly, right? How, how to correct my own sentence, etc. Uh, you may ask, you know, actually, uh, Microsoft Word actually has this uh, spell checker, right? Then what's the difference? But in this case, it's really a lot more comprehensive and robust. Uh, hopefully later on in the little demo, I'll show you, you can get this, right? Uh, and apparently, uh, they have a first-class accuracy uh, system behind. Uh, so uh, those are the few reasons, personally, I think on why you should be using it. So, okay, let quickly, let's, let me quickly do a demo, uh, right? So once you download, uh, you can download a client or something, but for my case, I'm demoing through the uh, their apps uh, interface. Uh, so let me just organize, organize my desktop a little bit. Uh. <clears throat> okay, so as a quick demo, so for example, I can type, uh, I would, I would like a piece of pi, right? So in this case, it will quickly tell me that there is something wrong with my spelling, you know, whether I'm trying to say, uh, okay, first is my I, I should be in caps, right? I would like a, like a, what is that? Is it a piece? Like in this case, it's probably a piece. I can just click on it and change it, right? Okay, uh, more demo, that's more typo. Uh, or maybe I have a situation where I use a wrong word. So for example, my co worker said he used a financial planning. Give me a minute, let me make sure. Use a financial planner to help choose his stocks so he wouldn't lose money. Right. So give it a minute. You will say, ah, oh, actually you use the wrong word. So it should be L-O-S-E, right? So there's one example. Uh, there could be other example. For example, maybe you use a necessary uh, comma and so when into the office early yesterday. Okay. Uh, what else? To complete a project. Right. So it will tell you uh, first, maybe this is not necessary. Read into early yesterday. This is not, not necessary. Uh, and then there is a typo yesterday, right? To complete a project, right? Uh, what else? Let me see. Uh, maybe the active tone, passive tone thingy. Uh, so I can say maybe a refund will be given to you. I shouldn't. Ah, okay. So let's say I write it this way, right? They will actually tell you uh, consider uh, rewriting this sentence in the active uh, voice, lah, right? So in this case, I may be better off if I say we will uh, give you a refund. Right? So in this case, if you feel that it's better, then obviously no other recommendation is made, lah, right? Okay, so, so these are just some uh, usage, how you can use this Grammarly to help you write better. And if you see on the right-hand side, uh, if you write a long paragraph, uh, you actually tell you a score, you know, uh, you can actually adjust your score, your audience is a general audience or it's a very knowledgeable audience. 
Uh, do you want it to be very informal? You want to write in an informal way, formal way, right? In this case, I basically put neutral. La. Okay, so I won't go into detail, la, but these are just some, uh, some feature you can choose. Uh, uh, hopefully get you aware of this tool, right? It will also tell you, give you some other score, like whether uh, what you wrote is engaging or not, uh, or how correct uh, your writing is. Okay, so that is for Grammarly. Uh, I won't, I won't pause here. Probably if you have any question, uh, please, please feel free to uh, post it on the Q&A. Then we will address that at the end uh, of, the, of the webinar session. Huh? Okay, so let's continue with the next one. The next one is to create content with new ideas. Uh, I think this is something very interesting. When I first get in, get to know this tool, I kind of really fall in love with it. Uh. I play with it quite a bit. Uh. Uh, this tool itself is called Jasper. This website is called uh, www.jasper.ai. Previously, I think it was uh, branded as a uh, uh, Javier, Javier or Savior, uh, but recently they, they rebrand themselves and they call their product Jasper. Uh, Okay, you can scan the QR code to go to their website or you can type uh, jasper.ai onto, uh, onto your web browser and you can go in and take a look, right? But same thing, I'm going to just play an introductory video uh, to give you a glimpse of what this tool is about. Say hey to Jasper. Artificial intelligence makes it fast and easy to write content for your blog, social media, website copy, and more. Writer's block have you stuck? Not anymore. Now you can scale up content five times faster using AI. So how does Jasper work? Get started at jasper.ai. Once you're in, choose from over 50 different writing skills Jasper already knows. Simply tell the AI what you want to write about and then press generate. Instantly before your eyes, watch Jasper write content for you. And since Jasper has read 10% of the internet, it knows all about your niche and is trained by expert marketers to write emotional, persuasive copy. Do you want to write high quality blog content fast? Then activate boss mode. This lets you command your AI assistant directly in documents like, Hey Jasper, write a paragraph about aliens in the tone of voice of Joe Rogan. <laughs> Dang, look at that. Now you just got to make your edits, rephrase, and then generate your next paragraph. It's that fast and easy. Jasper writes original content that's plagiarism free, optimized for SEO, and drives sales. That's why Jasper is rated five stars in over 3,000 reviews. For the first time ever, we have content that's like actually really ranking. You've probably seen copy already that was written by it, and it's so good that even I have seen copy that's written by it and never, never realized. I can do so much more, so much faster because I'm cutting out a lot of the legwork in the copywriting, which is staring at the blank page and wondering what the heck I'm going to write about, right? We invite you to join the most engaged community in content marketing with over 50,000 people in Jasper Nation. Get started now at jasper.ai. Say hey. To okay, so that's Jasper AI. Uh, what it is, in a nutshell, is a writing assistant. It helps you write uh, very fast, right? Uh, the content generator is uh, almost 100% original. Uh, I actually read somewhere there are people that write their own books. Uh, uh, of course, it's very general kind of books uh, uh, using this uh, AI, this writing assistance. Uh, uh, it also pro provides some template, you know, for example, if you just want to create a title, maybe for your Facebook post or your Twitter post, uh, you can quickly use those templates uh, and it know what you actually want, uh, what format you actually want and you create that uh, title for you, right? Uh, as the video mentioned, the AI itself is trained on about 10% of uh, based on reading off the internet. Uh. You may think 10% is really not a lot, right? Uh, but it's actually quite a lot. Uh. There's quite a bit of things that they can actually, uh, rather the assistant can actually write for you already. Uh, but what happened is in the tool itself, uh, if you can provide a short paragraph about what you are going to write, uh, uh, it can actually generate content again based on those background information provided, so to speak. Uh, but it, it is that it is, uh, chances is that the people behind this is still continuing to train the AI uh, uh, to be more knowledgeable. Uh, right? Okay, uh, so why should you be using it? Uh, if you are a social media manager or copywriter uh, that you need to write really compelling stories, uh, you can use this. Or if you are a blog, you know, you write blog, uh, Again, later I'm going to show you demo to you how to I use a tool like that to write, uh, say perhaps a blog post, right? Uh, 
zero plagiarism, you know, student who may need help in writing essays. Uh, I'm not encouraging students uh, to use this totally uh, because there are still uh, areas where you need to do your own uh, facts finding, uh, your facts check and things like that. But uh, the, the two really help you to write in a very different way and more engaging way, uh, so to speak. Or simply you are a small business owner, uh, you know, you pretty much don't want to spend so much uh, uh, hiring a professional writer to write for you. So these are some consideration of why you should use uh, Jasper. Okay. Okay, let me quickly do a demo. Uh, okay, give me a minute. Huh? Uh, I'm going to use Jasper. Yeah, so go to this jasper.com, uh, sorry, jasper.ai. And you will be able to see uh, once you log in, uh, assuming once you log in, you will be, be able to see this dashboard. So I'm going to just quickly create a new document to show you some uh, features, so to speak. Right? So uh, once you log in, you can start. I'm going to just demo to you how to start a new document from scratch. Right? So from here, I can start to write uh, something. Uh, any, any suggestion? Anyone want to type in the Q&A or the uh, chat? Uh, I think it's more Q&A, right, for you Maybe a title for me to write about. Anyone? i wait for five seconds. One. AI. Okay, so I'm, yeah, I saw Archie, right, uh, suggest AI. So I'm going to say, uh, write a blog, or maybe write, not write, uh, suggest a blog title about artificial intelligence, right? Oops. Right, so Jasper is thinking, right? You will suggest some title for you, right? Uh, 10 amazing facts about AI, five surprising way AI can change our life. How to prepare for coming uh, AI revolution? What if robot replace human in every uh, industry? Uh, any suggestion which one you want to know further? One, two, three, four. Anyone? No one. Okay, if no, then probably I will do, I will suggest. Uh, uh, give me a minute. Okay, maybe what I'll do is I will select 10 amazing facts about AI. Uh. So what I'll do is I'll say, write a blog outline. That's it. Okay, I outline. Uh. Let me just make this a heading. And then I'm going to say this. This will be thinking, and then the Jas Jasper will uh, uh, give me some outline uh, that I can uh, suggest some outline that I can use. For example, what is AI and how does it work? History of uh, AI, the benefit of AI, future of AI, how to get started uh, with artificial intelligence, example, for example, right? So now we go into the meat of the writing. Uh. So now I want to write more about what is AI and how does it work, right? So I'm going to bring you all into what they call a paragraph generator mode, right? So I can come in here and say, okay, let me write. I want to write a paragraph about what is AI and how does it work. Keyword, probably I can put artificial intelligence and let's see how it goes. Huh? I'm going to click on generate AI content. Give it a few seconds, it will pull out what this fellow know about AI. Oh, oh now that I see uh, Vyash Sh Vashali uh, say for right. Sorry, I missed that. Uh. Okay, never mind. Let's come back to this. So one of the uh, uh, suggested paragraph is, you know, AI is a branch of computer science that deals with making computers smart. Uh, that is uh, AI deal with blah, blah, blah. Then another suggestion and yet another suggestion. So assuming, okay, I like this paragraph, I can just do a copy and then I can edit here, right? So that become your first point. 
of course, uh, it, it have you right, so you still have to do your own facts finding uh, uh, to make sure uh, that uh, it, it makes sense, it's really what you want to convey, right? As a human, I think this is your blog post. Let me just have another one for sure. Let's say I put top 10 AI companies to watch. Same thing, I can come back here and then I will say generate AI content. <clears throat> right, then you will start to list A, uh, number one, Google, number two, Facebook, number three, Amazon, so on and so forth, right? These are the top AI company. Again, I'm happy. I can just copy the clipboard and I can paste it here. So next, assuming I'm really done with all my main content uh, due to limited time, I'm going to ask Jasper to write me a conclusion. So I can just put conclusion, right? And then I highlight this as a command so that Jasper know what I wanted to do. And then I run it. And you will generate a conclusion for me. Neat, right? So can you imagine if you were to write a blog post, I only use about a few, a few minutes. Uh, if you spend some time, uh, uh, this can really help you write quickly. But of course, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you still need to do your own find, facts finding, right? But the assistant really help you uh, write further based on your thoughts, uh, so to speak. Okay, so that is two tools now. Uh, I still got more to go. Hopefully you are still with me. Okay, let's go on to the next one. I think there's some question. Yeah, later on, I will address those questions. Thanks. Okay, the, the next one, uh, this is again in the, in the line of generating new content. Uh, this is basically what I call crayon, uh, but crayon with an eye in front. Uh, if you realize, if you noticed earlier on when I start the presentation in my first page, right, I have an illustration. I basically use this tool to help me create that illustration. Okay, so that's how I use crayon uh, as a tool. Let's take a look at this video to give you a little bit background of what is crayon. Have you ever seen a polar bear playing bass? Or a robot painted like a Picasso? Didn't think so. Dolly 2 is a new AI system from OpenAI that can take simple text descriptions like a koala dunking a basketball and turn them into photorealistic images that have never existed before. Dolly 2 can also realistically edit and retouch photos. Based on a simple natural language description, it can fill in or replace part of an image with AI-generated imagery that blends seamlessly with the original. It's called inpainting. In January 2021, OpenAI introduced Dolly a system that could generate images from text, like this avocado armchair. Dolly 2 takes the technology even further with higher resolution, greater comprehension, and new capabilities, like in painting. It can even start with an image as an input and create variations with different angles and styles. Dolly was created by training a neural network on images and their text descriptions. Through deep learning, it not only understands individual objects, like koala bears and motorcycles, but learns from relationships between objects. And when you ask Dolly for an image of a koala bear riding a motorcycle, it knows how to create that or anything else with a relationship to another object or action. The Dolly research has three main outcomes. First, it can help people express themselves visually in ways they may not have been able to before. Second, an AI-generated image can tell us a lot about whether the system understands us or is just repeating what it's been taught. Third, Dolly helps humans understand how AI systems see and understand our world. This is a critical part of developing AI that's useful and safe. The technology is constantly evolving, and Dolly 2 has limitations. If it's taught with images that are incorrectly labeled, like a plane labeled car, and a user tries to generate a car, Dolly may create a plane. It's like talking to a person who learned the wrong word for something. Dolly can also be limited by gaps in its training. If you type baboon and Dolly has learned what a baboon is through images and accurate labels, it will generate a lot of great baboons. But if you type howler monkey and it hasn't learned what a howler monkey is, Dolly will give you its best idea of what it thinks it could be, like a howling monkey. What's exciting about the approach used to train Dolly is that it can take what it learned from a variety of other labeled images and then apply it to a new image. Given a picture of a monkey, Dolly can infer what it would look like doing something it's never done before like paying its taxes while wearing a funny hat. 
Dolly is an example of how imaginative humans and clever systems can work together to make new things, amplifying our creative potential. Okay, so that is Dolly uh, version 2. Uh, what happened is that this is actually a Have you software ever... uh, created by uh, OpenAI. Uh, it's not generally available yet, right? It's only available to a small group of uh, beta tester. Uh, but what happened is that there's another group that used a smaller version, uh, a tinier version uh, uh, of a DIE, uh, and, they, and they make it freely available. Uh, and the website uh, is called Crayon. Uh. So later, I'm going to show you uh, where, where is it and show you one example uh, on how you can create. So I'm not going to delve into this because I think if you watch the video, you already know. Uh. So I'm going to just straight away jump into why should you be using it. Uh. Uh, you can be using it to generate cover and header images uh, from your blog post or any article that you want to have some visual aspect of it. No? Uh, it can even be used to generate uh, post that you can post on Instagram, you can use it to create music cover, uh, product uh, packaging, you know, uh, e even NFT, why not, you know, uh, you can also use it to teach arts, right? Uh, the last point that I wanted to highlight is that what I'm going to show you now is not quite ready for commercial use uh, because they are still uh, relatively low uh, resolution, uh, but the commercial Dell E uh, will, be, will be high resolution, right? Okay, so without further ado, uh, let me quickly go to this uh, uh, website. All right, so I'm going to just quickly again type a message. Uh. Uh, maybe I say, uh, wait, give me a minute. Uh, just give me a minute. Uh. Okay, I'm going to just use this paragraph, right? Full body photo of a horse in a spacesuit. I'm going to just generate. Uh, it's going to take about one minute plus uh, uh, to do the generation. Oh, let's give me a minute. I don't know why is it not loading. Uh. Yeah, so it's creating. So meanwhile, I maybe I, to make it a little bit more interactive, maybe the audience, do you have a sentence that you want to uh, have it painted, feel free to share it on the chat. Uh. If we have time, I can actually try that out. Screaming robots. Okay, I see that there's other question. Uh, let me come back to it later. Uh. Let's take a look at this. Later on, maybe I'm not too sure whether we have a lot of time or not. Uh. Screaming robots. I just want you all to see this. Uh, uh, how is it generated? Uh, to experience it a little bit. Right. Yep. So this is what is generated based on that statement. Uh, a full body of a horse in a spacesuit. Right. Uh, <laughs> that's how it is. Uh, you can then take a screenshot or you can actually click on it and download it lah, uh, for your use. Like what I have done is I actually type in a sentence for my webinar and then I download it and then I use it as my background. Uh, as you can see, this version is still not giving you a very high res kind of uh, image. But well, to me, it's good enough. Lah. Okay, let me see whether I can do a screaming robot lah. and see how it goes. Okay, it's another few more minutes, uh, probably one minute plus. I think we can. Uh. The, rest, the rest of the tools are not really uh, the, it's not functionality. You know, it does one thing and does one thing very well. So uh, I, I think I don't have a lot to talk about it uh, for the other two. Let's just spend a little bit of time here.
Okay, that's how your screaming robots look like. Huh? Okay, is it uh, up to your standard Mirai? Okay, good. let's go on to the next part. Huh? Okay, the next one is relatively simple. Uh, I also saw some of your uh, wish list, right? Reply email quickly. So, so this is one of the tools called OV.AI. Uh, yeah. Again, you can just do a quick scan, QR code scan, but the website is really straightforward, ovy.ai. Uh, it can just use to, you can quickly use it to generate an email reply. All right, same thing, let's watch a quick video about what is this tool about. Do you find hundreds of emails every morning in your mailbox? What if you could answer in just one click? According to McKinsey and Company, every professional spends 28% of their working day answering emails, two and a half hours every day. Well, this is Avi. Avi is an AI-powered virtual assistant that writes email replies for you in just one click. You only have to check and send them. Avi is available in all languages, and you can decide to generate a generic, positive, or negative response. Avi also proposes appointment times for you thanks to the Google Calendar integration. With Avi, you can take back control of your inbox and your time. Try Avi now. It's free. Okay, so that's OB. Um, again, I'm going to go through detail. I think I have no problem sharing the slide. Uh, I will work with the organizer to see how we can make this slide available to you. Uh, very simple. One reason, uh, when you want to quickly write a reply, right? So same thing. I'm going to go into the demo mode uh, to show you how, it, how quickly uh, you can get it done. Uh, let me go to my mail. So it's, it is available as a... Uh, add on uh, in your Chrome browser, right? So like in this case, let's say I have this email invitation uh, uh, to an event, right? And I am interested to uh, attend also what I do, I click a reply and you will see this add on appearing, right? So you can just click, okay, uh, probably you want to attend, uh, you can just click and then the tool will basically generate and formulate a reply to you, right? Hi, CloudX uh, Lab team. Thank you for inviting us to an event. We are very interested to attend both events. That could be one how you can quickly reply an email, right? Uh, or maybe I want, you know, I'm interested, interested, let me just type here, huh? interested, but I am not available to attend, right? I can then click generate email. Right, then you will generate quickly a sentence without uh, sounding rude or anything. Uh, if you just have a one or two word reply, may not be very good, right? right. Okay, so that's uh, ov.ai. Uh, Help you quickly reply email. Uh. Right, uh, this is uh, the next tool that I want to introduce, accelerate your readings, right? Uh, earlier on, I saw some of you also type on to do uh, how to speed up your research, etc. right? So this is another tool called genie.io. Uh, basically, the tool is to help you research faster, right? Okay, let's take a look at the video. Too much to read, too little time? Introducing Genie, which produces AI-generated summaries of any article or document. Simply upload your document and instantly view a detailed summary broken down into sections and key bullet points. Our summary can improve reading speeds by up to 70%, and 82% of users say it helps them to work more productively. Try Genie now for free. Okay. All right. Uh, so what it is, uh, AI power research tool and note-taking tools are uh, basically three key feature, keyword extraction and definition, you know, semantic and query-based search uh, within and across documents. Uh. So once you created your projects, uh, you can basically search through your documents and help you write summaries or help you paraphrase, so to speak, right? Uh, uh, I'm not going to go into the how does it work portion uh, uh, in view of time. Uh, why you should you be using it? Because it really improves your productivity uh, and then uh, reduce your time spent researching, planning, you know, and writing high quality work. Uh. Uh, it also helps you a lot in terms of collecting factual information, right? So uh, the best way is to show you how it works. Uh. So I'm going to go into the uh, Genie, my Genie. So for example here, uh, once you sign up, you got to access, uh, you can start a project. Anyone has any suggestion for the projects? 
Okay, maybe I will just, in the interest of time, I'm going to just start a new project called baking. Right? I don't know how many of you are into baking. Huh? So then what I can do is I can add resource and I'm going to just type baking. Right, so once you click on the magnifying glass, what happens is Genie will go to the internet and search for all the resources uh, about baking. Right, and then you can start to add the resources into your project. So as you add, you will realize that the resource basically uh, get added into your uh, project list, so to speak. Okay, so I'm not going to add further uh, just for illustration purpose. Huh? You can also upload document. Let's say you're more research, you're doing research uh, papers, you read research papers where there are PDF, etc. Right? You can add those research paper and then the genie itself will do an index and then search through the document and create the summaries for you. So let's say I have one particular document that I'm interested in. Right, I click on it, it basically pulls out the content and gave you all the facts uh, pulled from this uh, article itself, right? It gives you the keywords, you can see all the keywords, it gives you the extract and the various definitions and tables, uh, etc. within the document. Okay, uh, I'm going to just show you summary. Uh. It just happened that this is summary. From a note-taking point of view, I can then, if there's something that I'm interested in, I can always click this to add to note. All right, once you click as to note, you will see this little note created for you. And from the notes, uh, you can basically uh, use the tool to do a paraphrase for you, you know, so that it make it look original. And then you can read it uh, to understand and can you also use it uh, as some notes uh, to your other research. Uh, huh? Yeah, so quickly, that is how this uh, genie uh, work. Uh, I, I use it quite a little bit when I'm doing my research, especially on AI. Uh, so you can see some of the little project keywords you see on my uh, website. Okay. Very fast, uh. we still have about five, six minutes. Uh, the, the other tools are not really useful, but I think uh, at this point in time, but I just want to share with you all, uh, if you are really interested in this area, do feel free to play with it. Like for example, the first one is cloning your voice, uh, resemble AI. Uh, so as the name suggests, uh, you can use it as a speech to uh, text to speech tool. You can also use it as a, uh, 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 it can actually, clone your voice, that means uh, digitalize your voice uh, and can use your voice to uh, say sentences. Lah. Right. I'm not going to show the video. Uh, let me just go straight to uh, why, you should, why you should be using it. In this case, it's basically to create dynamic personalized voice app, for example, for your audience. Right. You can also use it to brand your smart assistant with a familiar voice. I know companies actually integrate this voice uh, into their IVR, you know, the interactive voice uh, response system. You can also dub your native voice into other language uh, to reach a broader audience, so to speak. Okay, so I'm going to quickly do a demo. Uh, this is resemble the AI, right? So basically, yeah, uh, I clone my own voice already. I clone my voice. You can see self Kiwi English. Uh, so I'm going to just say, how are you today? Uh, I think it may have time out. Let me just do a refresh. Okay, for some reason it's not playing. How are you today? Ah, uh, yeah. So it, how are you today? How are you today? Right. So basically, it cloned my voice. Uh, you 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 can train it to be more so that it can be more accurate. For my case, I only train it for about uh I think hundred sentence, so it's not very accurate. But if you're really into this, you know, you can continue to train it further so that it can give you a, a closer match to your actual voice. Uh. so that's voice cloning. Okay. The last one I want to cover, I think the author you already, most of you already know, so I'm not going to cover that. The next tool that is, uh, personally, I like it very much, uh, is uh, used to make music, uh, iva.ai. Uh, you can take a look at this website, scan it of, uh, and try it. Uh, I'm going to just skip to the demo. Uh. Uh, in this case, why you should use it, it really 
uh, you can have a royalty free music in a matter of seconds uh, and it's very cheap you know i think per month they only charge you uh, i think ten dollars or something right so let me just quickly go into this iva.ai uh. i have already created an account Oops. Okay, for some reason it's taking longer than I would expect it. So okay, never mind. Uh, you, you can try it on your own, but if you need a music uh, to help in your presentation, for example, you can always come to this website and create those music and it's really very fast. Uh, you can try it out on your own. I'm mindful of time. Uh, Early on, I think I took a little bit more time on the other tools. Uh, so I'm going to just skip all this. Uh, right. And I don't think I want to do an end poll. Actually, I wanted to find uh, what is the most interesting tools that you, you guys find uh, in this case. Uh, should I do a... Maybe let's do a quick one. Uh, just a few... Uh, just one, maybe one minute. That's all. Can we? Let's start a poll. Anyone? Three. Overwhelmed. You still have two, three minutes. Okay, once we hit 30, uh, we can start. Okay, let's start. Uh. For those who have not joined, you can continue to join. I just want to get some feedback. Uh, uh, end poll for today's webinar. What is your favorite tool uh, that you learned today? Okay, wow. Jasper is one of your favorite tools. Good, good. Let's go on to the next one. Hopefully, you'll find it useful. In one tool, what other type of AI tools would you like to use? Maybe outside this, you know, so it can help us also uh, uh, you know, kind of research, know what the market is. Uh. Okay, good. Thanks. Uh, I won't go into detail of this. I'm mindful of time, uh, so it's really 2 p.m. Uh, I, I just have some other material or some of the AI training material from Republic Poly. If you are keen, you can go there and take a look. Short courses and full qualifications, specialist deep uh, uh, program. Uh, and I just want to end the, the webinar, the sharing with a quote. Uh, good or bad, good, bad or indifferent, if you are not investing in new technology, uh, you are going to be left behind uh, by Philip Green. So hopefully you all can spend a bit of time playing with technology and see how it can save you. Uh, not save you, save you some time. Okay, you have my contact information there. Feel free to connect with me. So probably I will just take one more minute to see whether any question. Uh, do I need to cite Jasper AI if I use generated content? No need. Uh, uh, it's royalty free, 100% uh, present free as well. So we can just use it. Have you tried Google Image Gen? Uh, I tried it many years, uh, not many months ago, but my impression is not as good as Dow, uh, Dow E. 
Is Grammarly using American English? Yes, that's correct. Uh. Uh, I'm not too sure. I have not tried for British English actually. Sorry about that. Okay. I don't have any more questions in the Q&A. Uh, probably if you, if you are interested, if I have some questions that I have not uh, addressed, feel free to drop me a mail. I'll be happy to work with you. Lah. If nothing else, I don't want to hold any of you back further. Uh, can I hand it back to uh, Phoebe? Yes, thank you, Kiwi. So we hope that you have taken away some pointers and insights from the webinar. So if you do need guidance on your tech upskilling journey, you can sign up for the free one-to-one -one skills and training advisory session with SSG Skills Ambassadors. So they will have a conversation with you to understand your needs and objectives. It could be a new skill that you're looking for to enhance your employment prospects or for your career transition plans and share with you the relevant information. So this includes cost search and recommendations, type of assistance schemes and funding, skill future credit, and other resources on my skill future portal. So how can you find or contact a skills ambassador? So there are actually three ways to do so. Visit us at any of the locations indicated on the map. Please note the operation date and time. So they will provide you with suitable course recommendations based on your career goals. Simply scan the QR code or click the link in chat to register and they'll reach out to you within three to four working days. So we have come to the end of our session. We will appreciate if you can take a minute to fill in the feedback form by scanning the QR code or clicking the link in chat. Once again, thank you for taking time to join in our webinar. Do check out the upcoming webinars in our Skills Future Festival website. Goodbye. Hey.